like everybody, I think I'm a bit confounded about President Bush and trying to understand how much book learning he, he focuses on every week, how much he follows his hunch, who he trusts, how he does business. Is he really relaxing when he goes to the ranch in Crawford? Is he really deep down studying and grinding? How does he read? How does he learn? I think the big question we all have to learn as citizens right now is how is he going to react to this tumultuous week where he lost the Supreme Court nominee, he lost a top aide in security matters, the vice president lost his top person, and there's a lot of embarrassment all around. I want to go to John Dickerson. John, I saw the president at the lectern leaving the, on the White House lawn, leaving town on uh, late Friday afternoon, and he had that look of almost like, I'm waiting to think about this. I'm not ready to commit. I don't know who to trust right now. How did you read that amazing look of the president as he delivered those rather uh, careful remarks about the indictment? Well, it's always tough to try and read uh, read his mood, but I think you you probably noticed what they what they're feeling, which is that or what he's feeling, which is his gut has served him really well, and he's always known what's sort of baloney and what really matters. And uh, even his critics give him credit for kind of knowing his knowing his own mind and knowing his right. heart. And, and some things have gone south on him here that, that, and Harriet Myers really I would put in the first category there. This was a gut call on him. Lots of other people are being blamed. Carl was distracted. It was Andy Card's fault. This was the president's call and he made a gut level call about both her and also about what the politics could bear both within his own party and in the Senate and he got it horribly wrong. Right. This and is the first so, time by the way he's, he's, he's had to react uh, by checking his gut and, uh, with, and allowing that nomination to be withdrawn. In the past, if he was questioned about big tax cuts or the war in Iraq or the war in Afghanistan, he's always said, I'm right, I'm sticking to my guns. This that, time, he allowed himself to go into retreat. Uh, is that going to affect his confidence, self-confidence? It must, but, uh, but where, where it really will affect him is, you know, people are calling for, for resignations and firings and for him to do a lot of symbolic things to right the ship, and perhaps he'll do them. I think his course is really going to be to just try and focus on what's in front of him. But his base is the one that really notices a sort of phony firing when they see it. And they quite like his, his ability to kind of know his own mind and stick to it regardless of what the elites or the pundits say. Yeah. So he has to be careful now about doing anything that his base, with whom he's had issues of late, uh, will see as a kind of phony capitulation. Yeah, I once recommended to one of his staff people, I said, you know, the president would be a lot more popular up in the blue states if just one weekend he brought Laura up to New York, saw a play or two, stayed at some hotel and just acted like yeah, a regular American. He said, he'd hate if, it. You, if you ever recommended that to this president, he would say, what committee cooked that idea up? He may have an opportunity soon. There are reports that if the Treasury Secretary leaves right. next month that Andy Card might move over to Treasury. And that meant... Where he could, wants to go, by the way. That could mean bringing some new blood in. But then, of course, uh, how much will he feel he has to pay lip service to the base? Whom would he bring in? Uh, would that person shake the place up? How much is this you're a conservative. Let me ask you, who would, it, it seems to me it's the same question of the Supreme Court nomination. I sense he's going to go upgrade next time, more Ivy League, to answer those critics, the, uh, the neocons who criticized this, the nomination of Harriet Myers, and a bit to the right, a little bit to the right of her, clear, clearly so, up and right. Uh, but also, if he, if he wants to re-up a, a, be a better staff, he wants to recruit a more staff around, does he go back to Don Evans, former Commerce Secretary, a sound Good guy, choice. but not an ideologue? Does he bring back Nick Calio if he can, the top lobbyist for the administration? What would make you happy? Chris, what would, I, would impress you when you think he should do nothing? I think you might be uh, coming up with a diagnosis that he hasn't come up with. Things were looking up for him by Friday. Um, Friday was not a bad day in a bad week. It would have been worse if Harriet Myers hadn't been withdrawn. That would have been terrible. Um, I think he, he recognized it was a political blunder. What might he have learned? Because he did go with his gut on that one. There were some voices in the White House advising against it, and he ignored them. So maybe he's learned a little something there. I don't know what you'd call a bad day. No, Friday was a much better day. What if Harriet no. Myers hadn't withdrawn? Well, what if she hadn't withdrawn uh, well, and she, she was... She had withdrawn. no choice. She had okay. withdrawn. Well, no, but who was predicting that until she... All of a sudden, did Every, everybody was saying? Everybody was saying, "There's no way he'll let that happen." Even if she wants well, to, people I, were well, saying. That's our point. Why he let it happen? Exactly. No, no. He permitted her to withdraw. Sure, sure. He can correct a mistake. No, is what I I'm think saying on here. Chris, on Chris's Sunday show a week or two ago, and we all predicted Friday, that he was going to let he her withdraw. He corrected a mistake, and come Friday, we didn't have five White House staffers uh, yeah, indicted. Okay, you we had a single that, one. You say stick with his hand. Yeah. Okay. Let me go. To, let me go to Mike. I haven't heard from you in a while, Mike. The President of the United States does have a challenge. He's lost Scooter Libby on the, on the security front. 
I guess they'll bring in Addington. I've heard that rumor today. Another guy who's part of that bunch on uh, the vice president's staff who were all involved in trying to deal with the Joe Wilson threat. I'm not sure that's a solution. What other changes do you think he's going to pull? Well, first of all, I agree with Kate that uh, Friday not having Mr. Rove indicted is a huge thing. And don't buy these stories that says he's still in jeopardy. Uh, his friends feel clearly that he's been cleared. He's being careful not to be ebullient, not to gloat, uh, because he doesn't want to taunt uh, the prosecutor. But his uh, team feels very good. I agree completely with Kate that it's a good thing for the president that uh, Harriet Meyer stepped aside. He was bleeding. That decision was always going to diminish him. Now he has a chance to make a decision that will excite people, that will show his range, that will show that he can think bigger, that he can put someone on the court who will last longer and uh, be a, a better uh, part of his legacy. So uh, people in the White House uh, are excited about that turnaround. They also are excited about the fact that there may now be an impetus for the president to listen to other people. As you know, Chris, one of the biggest weaknesses in this system is there's no devil's advocate around that table. A friend of mine has the expression, breathing each other's fumes. And that's always been this White House's problem. And so people in there who have been worried about that think that this is the chance to do something different. So if you get an exciting court pick, the president's doing his international uh, travel. Uh, he's doing a little foreshadowing of a January agenda. And in January, they're hoping to start clean, as one of them uh, put it to my colleague Karen Tumulty, press the reset button on the presidency, make good use of the three years ahead. God, you sound like Tony Robbins. I feel better already. Anyway, when we return, <laughs> President Bush promised to restore integrity to the White House. How much of a credibility hit was that, uh, that set of uh, indictment last week? This is Hardball, a special report this Sunday night only on MSNBC. This is a very serious matter, and compromising national security information is a very serious matter. But the need to get to the bottom of what happened and whether national security was compromised by inadvertence, by recklessness, by maliciousness is extremely important. We need to know the truth. And anyone who would go into a grand jury and lie, obstruct, and impede the investigation has committed a serious crime.